Today, I'm going to be surviving 200 days of Minecraft hardcore in an ocean-only world. And now, this is season two of me surviving in an ocean-only world because of all the different updates that Minecraft has added. And in today's video, we are going to be upgrading our world significantly, trying to make sure that we're going to be surviving as long as possible, building up some epic auto farms, some bases, and some other cool things along the way. And if you guys go on to enjoy this video, make sure you guys smash that like button, hit subscribe, join the Paul GG army. And here's the 200 days of minecraft hardcore in an ocean only world and now finally we're back on the ocean only world world that's completely covered in ocean and we're gonna try to survive another 100 days all the way up to day 200 it is currently day 101 in the last video we actually left off our last project with setting up an iron farm and it looks like it's fully functional because it wouldn't actually work yet because there wasn't enough villagers in it so that's good. Now we know that this thing actually is pumping iron. And look, I'll be completely honest. The day is already almost over because, well, I had to get like thumbnail assets and stuff like that. And um, and I know that's a little bit awkward since, you know, we're just starting the video on day 101. However, it might as well just start on 102. Yeah. There we go. Now we are starting a brand new fresh day at day 102. Now for this next 100 days, like I said in the intro, and I'm just going to continue to repeat myself because I got poo brain. I want to expand the base. I want to expand the base a lot though. And I do want to build up my own home because we built up a little uh, like skyscraper city thing. And I'm basically going to be living out of it for now until we have like our very own home. And then we're going to just turn this into the village and I'll just kind of block off all the villagers from being able to escape. But for now, they're all huddled up in this one house. But for expanding the base, I'm going to have to create another little outline. So first things first, I'm going to need a whole lot of rock. But then we can be able to draw an outline and know how the base is going to be laid out, know what we're filling in and where we're putting everything. Now with all of our newly acquired stone, now what I want to do is essentially just build out another gigantic platform, much like how we've already got it shaped, except I'm just going to continue to build it out like giant squares. Wait, how many blocks is this? Is that one, one two? Wait, hold on. How many do I need? There we go. Now we got this giant new outline, which essentially the way that I plan on breaking down this base is, as you see, we obviously have uh, like built land, water, built land. There's like breaking categories with these walkways that will connect them. So this entire section will turn into the kind of like the villager section where we'll have like a villager food farm, the village itself, anything that involves a villager. We'll then have this connecting pathway to what will eventually become my base over here. So I'm talking like my house in the middle right here in the water. So I could have some waterfront property, of course. I don't know, some sort of storage system over here. I, I'm going with the flow or I'm trying to figure out just like you guys are <laughs> all i know is that basically each time oh my god all i know is that we're gonna basically continue expanding this base building on more and more making it bigger and better in every possible way speaking of villagers my pickaxe is getting a little bit low on health because i have to keep mining up tons of stone and i forgot that i never actually got mending on it i put mending on a bunch of other things but for some reason i'd uh nope nope Nope. Didn't get mending for my pickaxe, which makes me stupid. But luckily, though, we do have a villager that does sell mending, and his name's Trippy Pimpin. Uh, I just need emeralds. So I need to do some trades to this guy, sell him some sticks, as well as create more Fletchers. But for that, I'm going to need to chop down lots of... Oh my God, that cat scared me. I thought it was like another creeper. As I was saying, I'm going to need a whole lot of wood now. Chopping down these trees just isn't easy. Now we should be good to go on wood to make up plenty of monies. I just got to make sure that I sell to this guy first because he's giving me that zombie discount. There we go. Now that should be plenty for now. That's all I need is one. Nope, that's not what I need. Oh, wait, no, I need a book. That works out perfectly, actually, because I just bought books. Oh, I'll just buy a few since they're so cheap. And I'll just sauce one of them bad boys onto our pickaxe. So now I can heal it, but I don't really have any good way of getting XP since, uh, unfortunately, mob grinders are kind of just cheeks. Yeah. But in the last video, though, I asked you guys what you guys are... Eh. Ooh. 
Ooh. Which in the last video, I asked you guys if you're team mob grinder or team mob farm, because a grinder, basically, I got to melee it and get XP and stuff. But a mob farm means that it just automatically falls infinitely and you just show up to collect all the resources. And surprisingly, a lot of you guys are actually a mob grinder. You guys like to be able to get all the XP and stuff yourselves. I also did forget that I have holes in the roof of this thing because... We had a zombie villager that spawned inside of it and I had to rescue it out of it. Now, obviously I can just get it back to normal and hopefully some mobs could spawn and I can actually get some juice out of it. Doesn't seem like it. The next day. Oh, there we go, finally. And obviously the best case scenario is just building up like an Enderman farm or a Guardian farm or something. Cause that would be the fastest way of getting a ton of XP. However, that's gonna be a little ways out because we do have a ton of other projects that we need to do and I'm gonna need a lot of resources for even uh, building that up. Oh my God, I wanna start working on that now though. And now though, I'm just gonna have to juice it up the old fashioned way by jumping around in a cave and slapping a bunch of mobs. It shouldn't be too long. <laughs> Oh my god, this isn't gonna end well. Ooh, diamonds. Oh, except I just realized I am an idiot because another really easy way to get XP is not from mobs, but from the yeah. nether. Because now that I actually have an elytra, I can fly around and might have tons of quartz. Except by that, I mean, I forgot again that I have so touch and I need to make another pickaxe. But you know what, here, I'm gonna make an iron pick so that then I can mine the diamonds that I just got. And then I'm gonna burn the iron pick and craft up another diamond pick. So then now I could toss this thing in my offhand and I can mine up tons of quartz, juicing it back up. Hold on a second. How? Oh, it's the Halloween event. Okay, that's what too. That was tossing me over. I was I was so confused. I said that was tossing me over. Does that even make any sense? Am I just an idiot all the way around? Now that we got our tools all fixed up and stuff, now next thing on the agenda is that I want to start filling in the expanded area of the base. Starting off with this section, I'm going to need a ton of dirt because I want to basically fill in majority of this with dirt in hopes that if I have a giant grassy area that maybe some mobs will spawn because, you know, there's like passive mobs that'll spawn on like uh, grassy areas if they're big enough. And it would be very handy to have some sheep or even some moomoos and I'm already out of dirt. Awesome. Not to worry because we do technically have this big old island that we found over here that I could just easily shovel dirt from. And there's dirt in the ocean, but that'd be painful. I don't want to deal with that. So I'm just going to continue to mow down this one island that we found and maybe we'll find more. Until then, this island is uh, going to keep getting robbed. And now let's just finishing fill up. <laughs> now let's just finish filling all this in. There we go. Now we got a nice little area where I plan to plant a bunch of different trees and stuff like that. Well, hopefully we eventually get a traveling merchant. I feel like I haven't seen one in forever. Regardless though, if we do get a traveling merchant, hopefully he'll be selling trees or saplings and then we can be able to plant up some different trees and have them over here in like a nice little garden-y type of area. Until then, though, we got this nice little garden area that we can be able to just walk through going into the next part of the base while we work on it. Also, I got to move this stupid portal. Speaking of portals, though, while I move this thing, I do want to make a custom one. Making custom nether portals honestly just make them much more tolerable to look at and listen to. And so I figured for my sanity and surviving in this world, what I planned on doing is putting a custom portal on this side over here. Where first, we'll start off with some wood slabs. Mm. You know what? I don't want it to just all be wood because there's gonna be lava over here. And if this burns down, I'm gonna be very upsetty Pischetti. Oh, and then I'm also getting hungry. And then the farm is all ready for me. Burn me, please. As I was saying before I got distracted by taters, I'll do a combination of wood and stone going out to the custom portal. I figured this will probably end up being the safest way because wood just looks nice, obviously, as like a pathway. But if it's just all wood and it burns down again, espresso depresso. 
There we go. Now we got like these little cool pools of water on each side of the pathway combined with stone. So then obviously the wood platform isn't going to be caught on fire. Because over here, what I wanted to do is create pools of lava with a big circle portal or something like that. And also mix in some netherrack right here where it starts to meet the stone. To do that, I got to go over to the nether, which actually I just got, I just got rid of my portal. Hmm, a little awkward. Gonna have to slap up a temporary one right here. And now that we're in the nether, what I want to do is get a whole bunch of netherrack, a bunch of basalt. Ooh, and while I'm over here, definitely get some blackstone as well. Uh, actually, for blackstone, I could just rob some piglins. Actually, I never even looted this thing either, though. I just grabbed the gold left. So, in other words, I'm after everything you guys got me. Chest number one, we got some boo-boo. Chest number two, ooh, we got a little smithing thing. Um, okay, and then, ooh, ow! Okay, well, maybe I gotta be a little bit more careful. All right, and chest number three, just some iron. Okay, now my inventory's starting to get full. Maybe I just get what I need for the nether portal and we go back home. Hmm. You know what? This is not my portal. I don't know how this is even possible. Oh, it's because I moved my, I moved the portal but I went through the original one and it, it still linked to the other one. And then the other one linked back to this and they created a new one there. Yeah, I know I'm speaking gibberish. I'm a little lost, Ooh, but actually it looks like I've been here. I think I actually know exactly where I'm at. If I'm not mistaken, this should take me up and out right there. Aha, uh -huh, the deep blue. Oh, and our base. Now what I want to do is basically use some nether rack to create the floor for where the portal is going to be. And also add in a few little miscellaneous stone to kind of pepper in together the, the, the merging section. And also create a nice gigantic hole right here where I'm going to be filling it in with a bunch of lava. And it'll essentially be kind of like a moat all the way around the portal. There we go. Now that should work for the moat. All we got to do is fill it in. And luckily we are in a basalt. Nani? Okay, yeah, so it did make another portal. I'm so confused what's happening with those portals. But we are in a basalt biome, so I have plenty of lava. And now a million buckets of lava later, we got our pool of lava all the way around. What I want to do is kind of create some like burned marks. Oh, that's not fun. Now I need more lava. As I was saying, though, adding some like burned marks with blackstone all the way around it could add some extra flavor and also creating like a little bridge. I want it to have kind of like a ruined, destroyed look to it. So I could definitely fall in it at least three times a day. There we go. Now that's looking pretty snazzy. Got the nice little platform where the portals per but the portal's gonna go. I'm gonna build up like a little staircase. It'll probably be lifted off the ground because the bridge makes it look kind of small for a little circly platform. And for the portal, all I gotta do is basically tear this one down. Painfully. Very painfully. And I'm not entirely certain how this is gonna go. All I know is that I want it to basically look like a circle. So, um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. And there we go. Now we have our portal. All I need to do is light it up. But now we got our very like circular shape. It's not very even as it should be. It should be kind of uh, ruined and destroyed. Got a couple lanterns floating around here just to, you know, add a little bit of uh, color and aesthetic to it. But all in all, I think it looks pretty snazzy. All I need to do is go into it and I need to figure out this whole like portal linking thing because it's very upsetting. Because like this one, okay, a link to the right one. Now let me go back through. And if I'm in a cave, I'm going to scream.
Oh no, it works. All right, nice, perfect. Everything works out. Now that our portal's out of the way, next thing on the agenda is that, well, I actually need to heal my pickaxe yet again because I'm gonna need to mine up a bunch of stone for our next project, which is actually gonna be, well, an XP farm because I'm sick of having to deal with getting XP in all these terrible ways. And in reality, all I need is an XP farm and I can just infinitely heal my tools forever. Hello? What are you doing, sir? You're trespassing. I'll allow it. Just this one. So I'm just going to heal up my pickaxe real quick. Yes, give me all the green juice quartz. Give it to me, please. Hello, sir. Relax. And now that my pickaxe is finally rejuiced with hopefully the last time from using quartz, it's time to now get a ton of stone. Why is that? Dude, this thing is pumping right now. Maybe all you got to do is talk enough trash about it, and then I'll start pumping out mobs. Anyways, all we need is plenty of stone so that then we can be able to build up a juicy XP farm, and we'll never have to get quartz again for XP. And that should be good on stone for now. I do need to gather up some other resources, such as a bunch of leaves. I'm just going to keep growing trees and giving them haircuts. And I'm going to need to empty out the iron farm so that I can be able to get iron for hoppers. And this thing has been chugging. Ooh, and then also can't forget a snack for the road. And now last thing I'm gonna need to do is risk my life to get some more strings since we don't have any sheep in this world and strings kind of the only way that I'm able to get wool and I need carpets. As much as I don't want to deal, oh, bye. Okay, well, that took care of that. So this skelly's lived through everything. Oh my. Okay, just make them all go away, please. So as I was saying, as much as I don't really want to deal with like a spider spawner, it's definitely the fastest way to get in all the string that I'm going to need. I don't have any coal either. Can't stop the spiders from spawning. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, yeah. there it is. There it is. It's over for me. Abandon the mission. I'm going to cry. Ooh, string. Now we pretty much have all the resources that we're gonna need for building up this XP farm. All that's really left to do is head over to the stronghold to be able to start building it, which I don't really actually remember where the stronghold is. Um, not to worry, all I need to do is craft up a couple eyeballs and then we can set off on this adventure. I didn't mark the stronghold when we beat the dragon in the first 100 days. So I definitely need to do that this time around. Right now I'm about to just kind of uh, mindlessly fly off in this direction. Oh wow, the base this is looking cool. Look at this thing. All I need to do is add on to it, actually fill in these sides, put down a house right here. This is coming along. Okay, back on task. Oh, we finally passed it. Progress. I just remember that I used like a cave entrance somewhere around here. Well, I guess that's a good indicator. We left the brown pearl behind. So I guess that kind of works as like a nice little marker as to where the stronghold is. Or maybe not. Um, 20 minutes later. I can't confirm. I did find it. Boat is going to sit right on top of it. And that'll be our marker. We sacrificed the brown pearl. But it'll work out in the end because now we got easy access into the stronghold kind of and now all we need to do is hop on into the end or we can finally begin building up our xp farm which obviously it's going to be an enderman farm which now that i think about it i am going to need some uh some ender balls come here boys give me a balls bro these guys are impossible to hit they keep teleporting stop teleporting now that I got some ender balls, now it's time to begin working on this farm, which essentially, the way that this is going to work, let me first get rid of some of these blocks, because I would like it to have easy access on my little obsidian platform right here. But drop down some lava, let that pour all the way down into the void. It's, it'll, it'll take a while. Moments like these, I could truly appreciate a uh, good G fuel. <sighs> All right, now that the lava is all the way down into the void, drop some water. It'll turn all that into cobblestone. And then I got a nice little tower. And now all I need to do is make a nice little platform like so. Oh, I need to get rid of the rest of that lava, though. Yeah, we should be fine. Then now all I need to do is basically just build a gigantic bridge all the way out into the void until the end island is basically gone. All right, and that should be good enough. Yeah, pretty much the entire island's already chopped off. Just got a little bit on the end, which it's not like it's close enough for mobs to be spawning anyways. Now, all the way at the end over here, I'm just going to build out like a nice little platform for me to be able to have plenty of room to not fall off. 
slap a roof on this thing because I got ops in the end and I don't want them to be sneaking up on me as well. Only the short clubs allowed in this hut. Now I need to build out a nine by nine platform over here. And now with the three by three platform, all I need to do is set up a bunch of hoppers. Now, technically these could go into a chest, but I'm definitely gonna set up a little like a uh, dropper system over here to just spit out all the ender balls because there's gonna be way too many flying at me. I'm gonna just cover all this with carpet so that none of it is gonna be getting stuck in the hoppers. And then finally just slap a roof on this bad boy. And then just cover it up with a ton of carpet so that no endermangs are going to be spawning over here. And then finally just basically build up an outline of this circle all the way up about a bazillion time like a bunch of donuts. Anyways, uh... <laughs> And now that we're at the top, building out the last donut around this thing. Now I need to build out about 13 blocks in every direction. And then just fill it all in. There we go. Now all I need to do... Wow, there's so many Endermen spawning on the opposite side. Now I basically need to build the bait in which we'll be able to get the Endermen to fall in the hole. But I actually just realized I, I need a name tag and I don't have a name tag. Hmm. Back to the overworld. Now for getting a name tag, basically I could either A, go down into a mine shaft and hopefully find more chests, or B, I can level up a villager, specifically Trippy Pimpin, and he should be able to sell me name tags since he is the only name tag I've ever found in this world. So I think it's his right to sell me name tags. But first I'm gonna have to get a lot ooh, more wood. So that then I could sell more sticks to make more money. And then also I can't forget about my money up in the piggy bank. And basically just use the money to try to level up my boy Trippy Pimpin. Oh great, he's gotta sell me lanterns. Just what I wanted. So I'll just put these things all over in the uh, in the village. Ooh, and then he's selling me mending again. Now I've never actually had that happen before, so that's really cool. It also only requires what one emerald? Oh! Seven? My boy, don't mind if I do. <laughs> there we go. Now he leveled up again. Sweeping edge. Yoink. 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 And now I believe he should be max level. Yep. And he's selling name tags. Oh, I have exactly enough for one name tag. What the heck? My boy Trippy Pimpin coming through for the home team. All I need to do is fly back out to the end. And now we can finally finish up with our Enderman farm. Starting off with some trap doors all along this hole so that no matter what Enderman will be falling into it. Oh my God. I can't think it's so loud. I need to turn down the volume. Turns down the volume for me, Patrick, not for you, sorry. <laughs> and now I need to build out a little platform that's three blocks tall. Place on a bar like that, little carpet on top, and just build around the carpet. And now just basically bring my- Oh my god, first try? There's literally no way. <laughs> Okay, well, we got our, uh, our our purple booger is what I named him. And I just need him to get in the hole. Ow, prick. Oh, please, just fall. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so then now he's trapped right there. I'm able to destroy all of the... Oh, my God, I knew I made him out. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Whoa, what's up? What's up? Catch catch his hands, brother. I didn't think you wanted it. Oh. <laughs> Now all that's left to do is basically get rid of everything else right here. Then all the Endermen should start smelling my boy. Oh, 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 I'm terrified. Did I stare at one? I don't know. I'm so scared. Okay, he looks like he's chilling up there. And now if we come down here, excuse me, sir, excuse me, excuse me. We got all these Endermen that should be one HP. Oh yeah, give me all the juice. That's what I'm talking about. Oh. It's perfect. Look at all this XP. Get like 30 levels in literally like a minute, which also means now I can actually heal all of my tools as well. And I can also redo some enchantments for all my dookie enchantments that I have. So let me just juice up real quick for a hot minute. And just a few minutes later, we're already almost to level 50. Now, I definitely should build like a little auto dropper system because once there's so many ender pearls, it'll start lagging. But I'll leave that as a problem for future Paul to deal with. Guys, I'm gonna just take all this succulent XP home with me. 
And hopefully we can get some better enchantments on our gear. I just wanted to get to level 50. There we go. Ah, yeah, we'll just leave the rest of the XP. I'm not too worried about it. Now that we got ourselves a bunch of XP, now I can actually get to finally having better enchantments on my tools and stuff. So like we got looting two, but then we got sweeping edge three. That's pretty dookie all the way around. I have, wait, what? I got like no lapis? Oh, never mind. I lied. I found it. Now what I'm trying to do is get sharp. Oh, wait a second. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I hear traveling merchant. This is the first one in the first, what, 141 days of being in this world? Where's my boy at? Wait, what? Are you on the roof? There he is. Ooh, and he's got oak trees and spruce trees. Hold up. I'll be right back, my boy. I think I spent all my emeralds, though. Yeah, I'm pretty broke. Um, I'm just going to use all the wood that I currently have. Make more sticks. And in turn, it will make me more money. All righty, buddy. Give me one of them saying, give me one of those. And honestly, that's that's um, that's kind of all I want from you. Go take your leads. No, please, Paul. I have a family. No, I'll buy another sapling just in case. You never know. But yes, I am taking your leads. I'm sorry. No, no. Oh, that's not what I meant to kill. Until next time, traveling merchant. Because now we can actually grow up some regular trees finally. Because, I mean, as pretty as the azalea trees are, it's like they're just so annoying to chop down. Whereas this way, though, these are way easier to chop down. And then we can also make a spruce farm because I much prefer spruce to spruce. Much prefer spruce trees, but I'll probably have to put that somewhere else. Need to make sure I get saplings, though, out of this. Now I'll just, I guess, plant down my spruce trees over here on this side. And then this side will be oak. And these oak trees are really making me sweat for these saplings. This one only gave me one. I planted it down. This one's not giving me any more. Oh, there it is. Never mind. It's like I'm getting one per tree. Meanwhile, sprucey boy over here is just dropping it like it's hot. Now that that traveling merchant's out of the way back to doing some enchantments ideally i want unbreaking i want sharpness Ooh, you know i mean this isn't very good actually i hate knockback why is the sword got to be the hardest one? Oh, it's terrible ideally i would enchant another diamond pick as well with actually yeah fortune i mean it's only fortune two hmm. Hmm. there we go sharpness three knockback two holy crap i'm gonna knock myself into oblivion somehow this diamond pick ended up being better than my previous diamond pick so i'll just put mending on this one and then i'll yeah yeah i guess that works and now i'm out of juice gosh dang it nothing a quick trip to the enderman farm won't fix though that should be plenty of xp for now oh uh, yes yeah, so i come home to a depressing rainy ocean world Anyways, hopefully I'll get some better enchantments this time around. Come on, baby. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Fire aspect. Yeah. Mm. Am I just being picky? All right, fortune two on the pick, and that's all I get. Awesome. And the sword, we get unbreaking smite, fire aspect, and knockback. I'm giving up. I don't care anymore. Ugh, I just know that fire aspect's going to kill me. I hate when I light something on fire, and it lights me on fire. It makes me angry. Got just enough juice for another one, and it's trash. How do I keep getting the worst enchantments? You know what? I have a way better idea. I'm going to craft up an enchantment table, take a little nap, and fly back out to the stronghold again, where I can get a bunch of bookshelves. Where now I can set up like a nice little enchantment area. It's a little bit snug in here. Should have made this platform bigger, but oh well. And now I can farm XP. And then just wait for all the XP to juice me up and then I can do some more enchantments right here. Hold on. This might be it. We got looting three and smite. All right, whatever. I'll get an unbreaking book and then I'll get a uh, sharpness book or something. I don't know. But that's the best that this thing is going to get. Looting is going to be really important for this video and I'm definitely going to need it. So if looting three is the best that I could get, then it's the best I could get. Now, if we could just get fortune, that'd be great. Oh. Wait, hold on. Yeah, we got efficiency and fortune. So now I just need an unbreaking book and I need a sharpness book. Uh, but otherwise, we should be chilling. Yeah, while we're here, might as well do a bow as well. Yep, that's pretty solid. Of course, the bow works out perfectly. First try, but nothing else does. And now that we got looting on our sword, I can obviously get way, way more gunpowder for rockets. But more importantly, now I can actually go slay some wither skellies inside the nether so that then I can get wither skulls, beat the wither, and we can make a beacon which yeah that's the uh, the next part of this video so <laughs> so let's just hop on into our fancy new nether portal and ideally i want to try to find a nether fortress that is in a soul sand valley because in soul sand valleys there's way way more spawn rates and there'll be a ton of mobs i just don't know if i'm gonna get that lucky i'm gonna keep the book hmm, just seems like these things like the uh basalty biome oh that's unfortunate you know minecraft 
I don't know about you sometimes. You act a little funky, and I don't like it. Well, I'm gonna need some gunpowder, so real quick, let me just... Uh, no. Where'd he go? No! Oh, I'm not gonna go in the lava for that. Right, I'm about to give up on the dream of getting to Soul Sand Valley uh, Fortress. I've been flying around and I'm running out of rockets. However, this fortress is actually really bad too. I'm just gonna go back to my normal fortress. And I'm essentially just gonna fly around in this thing, clapping all the cheeks I see. Like these guys. Oh my God. Ooh, diamonds. I got a little dicey how to get out of there. Oh, hey, while flying away in a complete panic uh, from the previous fortress, I actually found another one. And it's in the Soul Sand Valley. I'm just glad that I literally just need one. So, please end my misery. Oh, Soul Sand Valley one. Oh, there it is. Beautiful, we got it. Get me back home. And now that we got all of our wither skulls, it's time to slay the wither boss. So we're gonna fly all the way out to the end because as much as I would like to give the wither boss a whooping, you know, especially for the video because uh, we're way stronger than the wither boss. I'm, I don't, I'm not scared of him or anything. Um, I'd rather just cheese him. <clears throat> All I need to do is place down some obsidian like so. I don't remember. I think it was like that. Yeah. Hopefully I don't mess this up. Oh, wrong. I messed it up. Now we summon the wither boss. He should be stuck inside the portal, suffocating his life away. Big felt. And boom. Okay. And then now we just clap him up. Oh my God. Smite on the sword goes crazy. What the heck? That should be illegal. Okay, anyways, now we got our first nether star. So now we could craft up a beacon. And by craft up a beacon, I mean, yeah, just only crafting up a beacon because, well, we don't have enough resources to make like a full-size beacon. <clears throat> At least not yet, right? I do plan on putting it, I don't know, somewhere over here. The house is gonna go here. So then I figure that one will be beacon. This one's gonna be an upgraded mob farm. That's what I'm envisioning at least. Cause this mob farm is doo doo caca. And we don't gotta talk about this again. But now to begin the next project is that I wanna finally build up my own home. Because like I said, we're kind of living in what's gonna become the giant village over here. And I do wanna build up a brand new spanking house right here in the water. Because what I'm envisioning is gonna be perfect for this world. However, uh, yeah, no, I'm gonna need some resources, like a lot of wood and some more stone. And I wanna do like a mix of wood this time, cause usually I always do like one type of wood and it's never really that good. So I'm gonna try to get fancy with this build. I might regret it because I'm gonna probably build it up, destroy it and build it up some more. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, let's get some wood. All right, this sucks. I'm over this. I don't wanna chop down these trees anymore. <laughs> I quit. Okay, well, I don't really quit, but what I do mean is I need to build up a new tree area, one where I can build up the giant trees. And now I want the giant trees to be separate oh, because they create the duty pod soul color thing, and I hate that. So they'll just get their own section over here where they won't be bothering the rest of my world. And I could still get a ton of wood because, I mean, like I said, I will be mixing woods, but the primary wood will be spruce. Whoa, wait a second. Hello? Bro, this tree got a bush. Is there any wood? No, there's none. Bro, it's not packing. I don't get it. Why does it grow down there? Now, first things first, what I want to do is start off by placing some wood into kind of like a circular shape-ish. Then I'm also going to have to line it up with a bit of stone on the inside. This is primarily just so that I'm able to basically... Joking on air. As I was saying, that's primarily so that I can actually walk around the base. Because what my plans are is to essentially... 
and a metal stone. As I was saying though, I want to put a boat right here in the middle. So it's going to be submerged partly underwater and then come up and, you know, go across and it'll like kind of stick out of the circle. Uh, but at least this way I could like run underneath it and stuff. Also, I'm realizing how ugly this to that is and that this, these two don't really go together that well. You know what? Here, I'm swapping this out. Maybe from this point on that way, it just becomes spruce. But everything over there will stay, uh, you know, oak. There we go. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Come on now. Now, was that a huge waste of time? Possibly. But now it's a schmokin' pathway all the way over here. Actually, I forgot. I need to yeah, do the stone. Now, for building up this boathouse, this is going to be a bit tricky. And uh, by tricky, I mean, I've just never really done it before. I've never built anything quite like this before and don't know how it's going to go. So honestly, I'm going to be kind of using like uh, references from the Minecraft shipwrecks <laughs> more than anything. And I'll start building up one that looks kind of similar to that. And then from there, just kind of start customizing it some more. Okay, so we made some pretty good progress. This looks pretty stupid right now, I'm gonna be honest, but it's coming along. It's actually working out because now in the bottom, we have the nice, like, I don't know, rounded, cascaded, like, look, and it looks pretty gradual and good. The bottom half of this, looking like it's floating. You know what I'm saying? Now I just need to kind of finesse this and figure out how to build it up uh, and out and not so awkwardly. But what I also want to do is kind of build like a little bridge right here to a door and then go into the door and then this will be the, uh, but the gallows, the, the, I don't know, the, the living room, <laughs> then a staircase that'll go up to the poop deck. And then we'll also build our bedroom where the cabin's quarters is. But yeah, I don't know. That's kind of just how I'm mapping it out in my brain, but yeah. <laughs> and now this part's going to be a bit trickier because I have to essentially build this up and try to make it tall so that then I can one, have a doorway and two, I'm so focused. I could also then build it out a decent bit more and then up a little bit higher. Something a little bit like that. And then we can put fences on top. So this will be the main entrance into the bottom side, like I said. Ooh, and then actually I could technically punch a hole in there right there. And then we could still have like a window also. Something like that. There we go. Now we got some good bones going. Got a nice little bedroom that's going to be up there. Our windows set up. I do need to add a lot more detail though to this. Like I, for like the, the railing around the side, I'm definitely not going to use fences because I feel like that's going to look too bleh. And since I am doing more of like a uh, oak spruce wombo combo, what I'll do is I'll add trap doors like this all the way around it. See how this looks? Yeah, it looks okay. Definitely needs a bit more of a mix. Maybe adding some sort of like trap doors like this. Nah, that's too flat. This has been so much building and tearing down. Okay, there we go. Now I think we're talking. Got this nice mix of using these trap doors to hold up those trap doors. But these trap doors got like bolts on them. They look way cooler. And also a little bit more stairs, creating a little bit more room up there. I just gotta do that same thing, but uh, yeah, over here. Now, finally, for the bedroom, what I want to try to do is something I never really do is actually use walls because then it creates that like extra depth, except this is kind of a problem right here because this piece of wood, so I'll just get rid of that. But most people just don't really remember that walls are a thing and, you know, they're supposed to be walls. Kind of hard to ever remember it, though. Oh, that's not how I thought that was going to look. I wanted to use fences for the windows. Hmm. 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 Guess what I could try to do is just use blocks around the windows. There we go. Ah. Ah, nah. Nah. Meh. All right, screw it. We're just going to go with regular walls. And by that, I mean not the walls. Not to add texture by doing something with the roof. You know what? Or alternatively, we just don't even use stone at all. Bruh. I'll be honest. It's just looking funky. The whole thing kind of has this like color theme to it and all of a sudden there's stone up here okay i think i've figured out a perfect oh my god Dude, that time was crazy mm. nothing as per usual you stink i take that back actually he has orange tulips and i don't think i could get orange dye in this world so i'll just go ahead and grab my monies and i'll buy up a few of them oh, and technically pumpkin seeds but i'm sure i can't get pumpkins in this world anyways back to the sicko mode boathouse okay that's illegal um 
Anyways, I'm gonna make this the kitchen. This is where the, you know, the uh, the stoves and stuff are gonna be. Maybe a little bit of extra storage over there, but we'll eventually build like a giant auto sorter. Now for the bedroom though, like I said, I figured out a way to get texture while still using the planks is that I use stairs in the doorway and then also in the windows. And the window sills will have uh, staircases on top and bottom. I also added these fence gate things to be able to hold up the roof, which is like a slopey roof with a little, little smokestack thing coming up the top and the inside side's just uh, very brown, unfortunately. Uh -huh. What you looking at, huh? But all in all, though, the boathouse is turning out sicko mode. Now we need to move into it, unfortunately. Uh, originally, I was going to say that we finished the boathouse on day 169. And oh, no, no, no. Perfect day to finish, but yeah, we got to move it. Now that the brown pearl's gotten a big upgrade and we're officially moved into this thing, now it's time to begin to uh, work on the next project because this base is coming along. I mean, this thing is looking swanky. Look at this thing. We just got this empty spot over here that's driving me insane, which I figured what we'd do is we'd probably put a beacon right here and then, you know, the mob grinder back there, get rid of that piece of trash because <laughs> Like I said, I need a lot more gunpowder for rockets, and I'd prefer to just be automated now that we got an XP farm. Regardless, as I said, uh, working on beacon. Well, this thing should have been cooking a decent bit while I was working on the boathouse, which I emptied it. Eh. It's less than I thought. So when it comes to iron, we're pretty much juiced already. Don't have very much. Now I think about it though, it would also be very cool if I build out the beacon, uh, one of like each color of uh, material to so doing like the bottom layer iron, then like gold, diamond, etc. What do I feel like I'm missing a layer? There's gold, there's diamond, there's iron. It needs to be four layers, right? I mean, I ain't getting that much another right, especially in this 100A. Ain't no way. There we go. Now we got a nice big old platform where we could have our beacon over here and then we could have our uh, mob grinder over here. The only other alternative that I could think of is putting the beacon on the ship like it, the ship is moving it, but nah, I don't know, maybe. For now, though, it's just going to go down here. Which, like I said, I need a lot more resources. So we're going to hit the caves with a fortune pickaxe because the caves below the house are still very, very juiced. So it shouldn't take very long just to get all the iron that we're going to need. One good thing though, while I'm down here getting some resources is that I'm also able to kind of like torch spam and prevent more mobs from spawning underneath the base and in hopes making the, the mob farm actually a little bit better this time. Now, much, much ores mined and many mobs slain. Yeah, head home because one, the inventory is getting a little full, but two, I'm definitely not getting any diamonds out of this cave. So we're going to have to find a new cave later. I think we juiced all the caves below the base. But we did get a lot of iron and a decent bit of gold. Now we got to smelt it all down. And now with the help of the iron farm, as well as mining, we should have enough blocks. And finally, after another trip down to the caves, we have a completely full bottom slab of iron and now the next one i want to do is gold because i do think gold is the next like accessible block then we'll do emerald and then diamond right i think that's a full beacon regardless though gold we're gonna get in the nether using fortune and now for gold like i said it's kind of just everywhere hey yo chill i'm working over here. oh my god there all right, well, there we go. So as I was saying again, gold's just kind of everywhere. So let's just get to mining. And of course, we can't forget about stealing gold from bastions as well, which this one is actually going to be loaded. This one's called treasure for a reason, baby. Hey, you know what? Just to make my life a little bit easier. Put on some gold booties. I've also been holding on to this fire resistance potion for a hot minute now. But let me first get rid of a bunch of the roof for my quick escape. Because there's gold in here that is high risk, but worth the reward. You get a lot of gold. Okay, so now I'm going to hop on in here. I just got to avoid piglin brutes. No! Piglin brutes get the crap out of me! Woo! Ah! Okay. No! No! Oh God, full panic mode. Oh, okay, how is he still up here? <laughs> All right, comp coolly collected. I wasn't even moved, not even phased. 
Okay, so we got a Piglin Brood down there. Not good. My resistance only has two minutes. So I got a strategy here. And that is to try to get him to jump into lava and get that one to also jump into lava without alerting all the other pigs and getting them mad at me. So I need to also get rid of this magma cube spawner because this thing is going to trigger me. There we go. Hey, come on. Jump in the lava. Don't be scared. I could also easily just do that. Sorry. Now for the fun part. I need to get all this gold without dying. Impossible challenge. I know. Okay, and then we can loot the chest too. Why not? YOLO. Ooh, netherite ingot. Is that our first? I don't know. Okay, and then now I could just casually fly out. Technically, there's more gold in this. Like a lot more. But there's also a lot more uh, piglin brutes. That's kind of the downside. Are you? There we go. So he's drops in there. He's now stuck. There might be gold in here or right here. Yep. Look at that. We're loaded. It's over. Now, pretty much all the piglin brutes are trapped, I think, for the most part. Maybe like one more in here. Oh, yep. Hello. Go ahead and take care of him. And now the rest of the gold and the chests are all mine. <laughs> Say bless up. Sheesh, golden carrots, baby. And now with all that out of the way, we should have plenty of gold to head back home and finish the gold layer of the beacon. Gotta lay all these bad boys down. And I'm still short. Give me two seconds. I keep underestimating how many blocks these beacons actually take. But gold layer complete. Now we're onto the emerald layer, which we can do from the comfort of our home. What? Com comfort of home comfort of our home all i need to do is chop down about a bazillion trees eventually and now we should have plenty of wood to be able to milk these villagers dry of all their emeralds I'm literally just gonna do a disgusting amount of stick trades and get all the emeralds that way the only downside is that they're probably gonna go on cooldown and that's gonna suck but until then stick trades oh, wait a second that's not stick trades what are you doing with ad villager stick trades only like this guy And finally, many of painful trades later, we should have enough blocks this time. Yup, there we go. We even got two to spare, baby. Now for the last blocks, all we need is diamonds. Now, <laughs> I mean, it's diamonds after all. It can be a little bit difficult to get, however, we should be fine. I have 20 currently, so that's what, two blocks. Not even that bad, actually. How many blocks do I need? One, two, three, four. So four times four. So that's 20 blocks. Oh my God. Nah, ain't that bad. What I do need to do, though, is go to a cave far away from my current cave system because we have juiced that cave for all the diamonds. So basically, I'm just going to find a hole and fly into it. <laughs> you know, not quite the cave I was hoping for, but ah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, we got ourselves some deep slate coal. Look at that. One of the rarest blocks in Minecraft. It would be a shame if I just find it. I'm just kidding. Okay, hold on. We do got silk touch and there is another one. So I'll take this one. Okay. Comment section. I don't want you to lose your mind. Everyone always goes crazy when Paul mines the deep slate coal. I'll save it for later, like a, a snack or something like that. But this is what I was looking for is a deep cave like this. The only downside is that there's a lot of lava. Also a mine shaft on fire. Nice. Love to see it. And also diamonds. The thing we are actually here for. Oh, and an enchanted spider. What's up, brother? You want the, want the smoke? Didn't think so. Oh my god. Now give me all your diamonds. Oh, this is the creepiest mine shaft I've ever seen in my life, by the way. Something very eerie about being in this. Cave one juice. Now on to cave two. Alright, cave, show me that juicy goosey. Oh, there we go. Jesus Christ. Dude, I'm playing the Matrix right now. Calm, cool, and collected. It's all okay. There's only a million arrows over there. It's all good. Now I get to collect my reward. Ooh, baby, an iron vein. Don't mind if I do. Sheesh. Get back basically all the iron I use on that stupid beacon. Am I right? Bro, oh my gosh. Where was this earlier? Well, obviously it was here, but you know. And now we should finally have enough diamonds to make this beacon we got three left over we have 16 if my math's right four times four is 16 right 
should be right. Beautiful. Wait, I built this thing wrong? Wait, do I need more or less? Wait. Am I an idiot? Have I been putting in more work than I need to? It's like that. I'm so stupid. Well, I guess this just means that we have resources left over. Awesome. Now, people have pointed out how I build my beacons stupid, and that's because usually I count them really wrong. And uh, today's no different. I thought it was a 10 by 10 on bottom. But there we go. We are <laughs> we got our beautiful beacon. Just kidding. You got to put the little topper on it. There we go. Now we got our beautiful beacon. Now it's time to begin the next project, which originally was going to be building up a mob farm. However, I don't think I have enough days for that because uh, it's going to be pretty big. But what I do have enough time for is taking down that mob farm because that thing sucks. And then I can be able to build something new in its place over here. But like I said, first things first, we're going to have to uh, go ahead and chop this whole thing down. Oh yeah, this is going to suck. But one thing that'll be good is all the blocks I do take from this thing, I will be able to put towards the next mob farm because it will require a lot of stone so the good thing that i'm actually tearing this thing down oh my gosh actually i just realized that technically i reached the beacon from over here this thing got a wide range but that does mean now i can actually use haste as my power up baby now if only i had better efficiency though and i could insta mine all of this but this still will help out and make me not want to lose my mind much 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 later there we go now this thing's pretty much all taken down clearing space for our next project which which, like I said, is going to definitely be villager related being over here in the villager zone. It's going to be a very important farm, possibly more important than the iron farm. And that farm being a potato farm, because I don't want to ever have to mine up all these taters ever again. And hopefully this will be the very last time that I will have to, because I need to get a bunch of potatoes to then breed the villagers again, because I've kind of ran out of villagers. So now all I need to do is drop some taters down, have these villagers go to town. And in the meantime, I could start setting up the potato farm, which ideally I'm going to want some glass for it because it's always more aesthetic that way. So I need to get some sand. Now all I got to do is smelt it all down, snipe this creeper Chris Kyle style and begin construction on this thing my plan here is to essentially build out one farm right here one farm right here make it a tower villagers will be in each one tossing taters into a villager in the middle this isn't a one block center though which is gonna make this a bit funky yeah we're just gonna have to build it off center i don't know what else to say <laughs> Okay, so here is pod number one and pod number two. So this is basically the setup. They'll have a nice little farm on the inside. There'll be a villager standing here, villager living in here. Actually, I need to go get those villagers to make this example clear. Which it looks like only one of these villagers has grown up so far. So I gotta try to lure him out. That's some work. Are you serious? Are you, oh, what? Uh, brother wrong job all i need to do is essentially lure him all the way over with a nice paying job it's pretty simple i do it all the time right patrick and then i just trap them and they can never escape ever again it's that simple so that's villager number one and i gotta wait for the rest of them to grow up to be able to actually move them in but i could continue to build the structure while waiting for that and technically i do need to start this off by building a storage system all i need to do is place down some hoppers like that put another one on top place down a rail like so and then just a hopper minecart on top of it and then a hopper for the next level and then it'll just continue to go all the way up funneling all the way back down to the storage room and i mean now that you get the concept uh yeah let's just kind of build this thing all the way up huh there we go now that's what i'm talking about kind of well i wanted it bigger and more glorious however this will have to do for now because the sun's setting and unfortunately it is already day 200 a very anticlimactic ending to the 200 day video but uh yeah we got a nice little food farm finally set up and it was painful moving villagers as per usual anyways if you guys like this video and all the builds and stuff that we're doing in this world is this world is coming along i like this shape thing that i'm doing now i'm gonna start building out like that way and that way and stuff but if you guys enjoyed this video and you guys like this world make sure you guys smash that like button and hit subscribe join the fall gg army and i will see you guys in the next one. Oh my gosh i just realized that this thing doesn't even have a sail that's so painful hey yo relax i'm venting